This is Team Halo, and this is their documentary, Observing and Exploring Their Process, for a STEAM Challenge, given to them by their teachers on April 28, 2014, which required them to work as a team to go to chair. The day before the STEAM project was given to Team Halo, they received a PDF from their teachers that they were required to print out, complete, and submit with their chair, which stated what the project was and additional information on engineering the science behind it and more. The requirement of the chair was that it had to be made entirely out of cardboard and adhesives, the seat had to be 16 inches from the floor, the back no less than 30 inches from the floor, it had to be comfortable and portable, and support the weight of an adult male. The group originally agreed on having a music theme for their chair, and then a fit for a king slash royalty theme the next day. But despite what, research was a very important factor in their process. Days for Team Halo consisted of sketching, planning, and measuring. Fortunately, around the same time, a math assignment was given to Team Halo's class to print off net templates, fold them, and use an adhesive to put them together. So this was able to help the team and give them an idea on how nets worked. Plus, the teachers also posted a list of videos from Discovery Education to watch on their moto, which helped Team Halo understand nets better as well. What all these problems have in common is that they ask you to draw nets for a given figure. So here are the steps that you should follow when you're trying to do this. First, visualize the figure as if you were looking at it from above. Then, unfold the sides like you would a cardboard box. And then finally, draw what you see. Let's take a look at this example where we're asked to draw a net for each figure. And we have two pyramid type shapes. So let's start by drawing number one. If we're looking down at this from above, we see that this base is a four-sided figure, perhaps a square. So let's draw that. Then, on connected to each edge of the square, we have a triangle leading up to the top. So that's four different triangles, one which is attached to each edge. And if we folded each one down, it would look something like this. And that would be our net. The teachers gave the class a sheet of paper for required planning. They must make a scale drawing of their chair, a drawing in net form, a 3D model, template patterns, then their cardboard creation once approved. When it came down to drawing the final sketch, however, Team Halo seemed to disregard the music or Fit for a King theme, and instead stuck with no theme. I wonder why they did that. Wait, maybe they wanted to focus more on the structure rather than the additional pieces of cardboard for a theme. Yeah, I see. On May 7, Team Halo presented their sketch, 3D model, and idea to their jury, which were the teachers and students of middle school. They were approved, but we were not able to get any footage of that since the gathering took place in private. After their approval, Team Halo started drawing out the patterns of their chair design on a huge roll of yellow paper. Very interesting. I guess you can say it's basically like a larger version of their original 3D model of the chair. I'd say so. And as we can see here, we can get an understanding that they are not perfect and do make mistakes, as one of the teammates here is erasing some mistake made on the paper. So they finished tracing. What comes next? We are cutting outside. It has been established that we can put down lines inside the gym, but we are only allowed to cut outside because the exacto knives and the scissors might go straight to the ground. So we are currently cutting outside right now. Interesting. So after Team Halo finished tracing and cutting out their patterns, they moved on to cutting cardboard and constructing. This was their building phase. Right now, Team Halo is getting ready to laminate several layers of cardboard for the legs of their chair using contact cement and paintbrushes. Cones also seem to be of use to the team as well to allow the cement to dry. Here, they seem to be cutting out one-fourth of their seat and braiding and putting together their base. Now that they have finished laminating their seat and putting their base together, they are experimenting a bit and getting an overview on how their chair will look like when completed. 
Well, what Team Halo has so far seems to hold pretty well. But news has it that they are going to be working during outside of school hours in an attempt to make a new chair with new and larger dimensions. So they did as stated and created a new sketch, 3D model, and reconstructed from scratch at one of the team members' house for two days. On the third day, May 21st, the chair was due and two of the members of Team Halo brought it up to school. The chair was also to be tested by an adult male subject who did not want to be featured in this video. And everything was going fine for Team Halo and they were ready for their chair to be tested until it happened. It happened on May 23rd. While Team Halo was getting ready for the weekend. That something happened to the chair which caused a weak spot in the corner of the seat. And when someone applied pressure to that spot to sit down, the tubes collapsed as well as everything else with it. The thing is, each member of Team Halo sat on the chair, although not together, and even other classmates had tested out the chair through a series of some days. On May 27, when the team came back to school after the weekend, they were able to tape some parts up together and reassemble it, although it was not as sturdy and the structure looked somewhat different than it was before. Team Halo didn't think that they would have their chair tested by the adult male since it wasn't in the best condition, but when it came time for the testing, the subject was able to sit on the chair and it didn't collapse, although it was still in a pretty weak state. He rated it out of a scale of 10 a 7.8 in terms of comfort, and that honestly surprised the team since they doubted the fact that after the chair collapsed, anyone would even be able to sit on it. Team Halo then reflected on their chair and this whole project and came upon their overall conclusions and applications once the testing phase was complete. Of course, Team Halo was very saddened over the fact that their chair collapsed and didn't work the way they planned it to. But they took it as a learning experience, something that they could grow and apply upon. They learned that every little detail makes a difference, and even the slightest mistake can make a huge difference in the end product. And that failure is acceptable, as long as you can learn from it and apply it to future situations. If we could alter our chair in any way, we would of course change the seating and make sure that even if a little part became weak, it wouldn't fall. And we would adjust the back to make it more straight. Agreed. And we want to completely acknowledge that we could have made it stronger and sturdier than we had it. So yeah, if we could adjust our chair, I think that we might even alter the design a bit to guarantee sturdiness of the chair. All in all, this project taught Team Halo the importance of patience, precision, acceptance, effective time use, dedication, endurance, and most importantly, teamwork and cooperation through working together as a team to complete a task.